Would I buy this handbag again? I know that this bag is really popular and it's trending right now and it's having a moment, which means that many people are interested in it and it's selling out at many places. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanna do a one month review of the Roe Margot bag, as well as show you guys what I keep in my bag on a daily basis. So if you wanna see that, then just keep on watching. By the way, if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Freza, and if you like these luxury types of videos, please consider subscribing down below. Okay, let's kick it off with my one month kind of review of the Roe Margot bag. So as I mentioned, I did buy this bag around the first week of January I want to say I did purchase this on matches fashion and I did a whole unboxing that I will link over here if you haven't seen that video before so in that unboxing I did mention that I was looking into either the 12 or the 15 and I was also open to either the grained leather or the saddle leather so I ended up going with the size 12 in the saddle leather and that's just a smoother leather and obviously in the black color. The way that I want to structure this video is I'm going to show you what's in my bag and what can fit into the Roe Margot 12 first and then we'll get into the pros and cons of the handbag. Getting into what I fit in this bag, I actually just got back from work and I wanted to show you exactly what I carry on a day-to-day -day basis if I'm bringing this to work with me. First, what isn't in my bag I guess I should say is my 13 inch MacBook. I have it right now with this black laptop cover, but my MacBook doesn't really fit into the bag. I did try putting it on a diagonal and it did fit in that way, but you would need to make sure that the singles are not locked for that to work, but it did fit if you were kind of putting the laptop in this way. Maybe I'll show you guys that after once I clear up what's in the bag. I had to go to the office and I was holding this in one hand and this kind of in the crook of my arm and that's how I would do that. So this is kind of what's in my bag right now. You can see that I don't have a base shaper or anything like that. So the first thing that is in my bag is this pouch from Lululemon. It is just a catch-all where I keep little makeup bits and things like that. So I've got a mascara, an eyelash curler, I've got a hand cream, a lip balm with my initials on it, I've got a pen, and I've got my perfume. This is Glossier U. I've been really liking this one. And then I also have a makeup by Mario lip product here as well and a comb so these are things that I want to kind of put all in one place because I don't want anything to spill in my bag or maybe like pen marks and things like that so I want to keep them all in this little pouch right here the second thing is a Celine sunglass case with oh yeah my sunglasses are in here so these are my sunglasses and it fits right in there really nicely I don't need to do a soft pouch because it's a pretty spacious handbag. And then the next things are my million small leather goods that I always carry with me. So this is my key holder from Louis Vuitton. I feel like I've talked about this quite a bit on this channel. I have a big apartment fob that won't fit inside. So I just have it hanging and I don't really mind it. I usually put this inside one of the side pouches of the bag, which I'll show you in a bit, but this is what the key holder inside looks like. I've got just like my keys in there. Next small leather that I have is this key pouch from Louis Vuitton again. This one has my car keys hanging and then I have some extra cards and coins in here as well. And the last thing I have in my bag is this new Celine wallet. This is the Triumph card holder. It's not the wallet, so it's just a really thin version of it. And it's bigger than a typical card holder because it has uh, an accordion where you can fit a lot of cards and cash. Um, and there's also a back pocket here. I've been really, really loving this card holder. Oh, and then the last thing is my phone. Obviously my phone fits in here nicely as well. So that's everything that I typically keep in my bag on a day-to-day -day basis. Now maybe we can talk about some pros and cons. One of the pros that I mentioned in my first unboxing video is how light this bag is. And I think that as I've been using it over the past month, that is still very, very true. Even with all of those things in my bag, it doesn't really add that much weight into it. And it's not uncomfortable to carry, or even if it's in the crook of my arm, it's not really that heavy. And I really appreciate that about a bag. I do remember having that issue with some other handbags that I've purchased in the past. If a handbag is weighing me down or is hurting my shoulder or is just a bit cumbersome to carry, I don't really gravitate towards that handbag anymore and I end up selling it. So I've definitely loved some handbags in the past, but because of 
its weight, I had to let it go. And I think that because of the canvas lining inside of this bag, it makes it really lightweight, which I really appreciate and I think is a pro for the bag. The second pro that I will say is that this bag has feet at the bottom. So if you get the 10, 12, or the 15, you will get five feet at the bottom. And then if you get the 17, which is the largest size that they have right now, you also get a middle one. And I really appreciate that about this bag because it protects the bottom of the bag, especially because the leather of this is very soft that I feel comfortable putting it down on a table and it doesn't get ruined. The third pro for this bag is that there is an opportunity for you to use the strap. I truthfully haven't been using the strap because I actually really enjoy carrying this bag top handle or on the crook of my arm. That's just the look that I have been going for lately, but I love the option for the strap as well. The other pro, and I think some people might think it's a con, is the leather of this handbag. This leather is so, so buttery and so beautiful and so luxurious. I really think that the craftsmanship of how this bag was created, it's just so well made. And I think the leather has a big part of that. So it is the smooth calfskin leather and it is very prone to scratches, which I'll touch on in the cons. But I think that the luxuriousness kind of, for me at least, over trumps that. I don't think I have a bag that has this smooth leather, maybe except for my Loewe puzzle bag, but I just love how smooth the leather is and it just looks very, very beautiful and like visually appealing. So I think that that is also a pro of how just well made and luxurious and quality of the bag is really there in my opinion the next pro i have is just the gold hardware and the gold details of the bag i think that for me i mentioned in that video that the reason why i didn't go with the grain leather is because the grain leather didn't come with the gold hardware it only came in silver and i really wanted the gold hardware because i think that that is the look that i'm going for mostly i already have a black silver hardware handbag in my collection and i think that this just adds something different so to me, I love the accents of the gold in just the buckles as well as the branding at the bottom and also the feet, but it's also not too much gold. It's not overbearing. It's just very subtle, which I really like. The last row that I'll say about this handbag is that it fits my own style. As I've been wearing it with many different outfits in my closet, I think that it lends really well to my personal style and I'm really, really glad that this bag kind of adds to my personal style and I feel like it really matches it. So I love how it's so classic, it's so minimal, and I think it's very on brand, at least for me and my personal style. So those are some of the pros for this handbag. There are a lot of cons as well. And one of them, as I already mentioned, is yes, it does have a strap, but the strap is not adjustable. So the strap is only one length. And I did try it. It looks fine on me crossbody. It goes a little bit long. For reference, I'm about 5'4". I wish it was just adjustable to have that option because I know people have different body types, etc. And the other con, I guess, is that when you do do it crossbody, it is a bit bulky. It definitely juts out at least on my body and it doesn't look the best i feel like i wouldn't primarily wear it as a crossbody i would more so wear it as like a top handle or like a crook of my arm bag and not necessarily crossbody unless i was in a real pinch because it doesn't to me in my mind like doesn't look the best on myself the second con is gonna touch on the pro that i mentioned which is the leather so although the leather is very luxurious and beautiful and well crafted it is still a very delicate delicate leather. It can scratch easily. I'm trying to find a balance between not babying my bag because you should definitely be wearing things that you purchase and not just keeping them on a shelf and also still trying to maintain the handbag itself so that there is longevity in it. So yeah, this bag can get scratched easily than if let's say I got the gray leather, but I might, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a bit of a scratch right there, which wouldn't typically show if you got 
the green leather. So it's not the most durable leather is the con for this bag, I would say. The other con I would say is the interior. So you can kind of see that the interior is this beautiful canvas herringbone in a cream color. I have been toying between deciding if I should do a insert in here or like a bag organizer just to protect the interior of the bag. Because it is a cream color, it is susceptible to getting dirt and stains and things like that. And that's really why I have this pouch that I put in here for things like makeup so I don't really spill on the bag. But even now I've been pretty careful and I can see that there's like a lot of dirt just kind of hanging around in there. I'm not sure if you can, if you can see there, but that is a con. It's very easy to get stains and the stains will show because it is a cream colored lining. So yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna get a bag organizer for this or anything like that, but I am very conscious that this is something that might get dirty pretty easily. The other con that I would say is that this, it doesn't really have a really good closure. There is a T-bar, which I will do up for you and I can show you. So I just closed the T-bar. That is basically the closure of the bag. And you can also tighten these buckles on the side, but for the most part, it is quite open. So there is that issue of security. There is no zipper, which I think is the con for this bag. So I think you just need to be very careful if you're taking public transportation or if you're in large crowds. This is not a pro or a con, but I wanted to add here as we're talking about the buckles that I'm very surprised that I have been really enjoying wearing this bag with the buckles kind of undone like this. First did this when I wore the bag because I wanted a easier way to just like open the bag really wide and I wasn't really able to do that when the buckles were closed and I've been really enjoying having just like that undone look of the buckle just kind of being out like that. I don't know. I've been really enjoying that. Again, not a pro or a con, just kind of like a personal preference. And it does allow me to kind of open the bag pretty wide if I wanted to. I have two other cons. One is that this bag is pretty hard to find at this time. I know that this bag is really popular and it's trending right now and it's having a moment, which means that Many people are interested in it and it's selling out at many places. I think that if you can wait for this bag, you should. I definitely think it's gonna come back on places like Matches Fashion or My Teresa. If you are looking for this bag, I would suggest signing up for those emailing lists to be able to be notified when this bag comes out. But yeah, one of the cons right now is that this is really hard to find if you were looking for it. And the last con I think everyone knows has to be the price of the bag. I'll put on the screen how much this bag is retailing for right now. It's a lot of money. I don't think that the price point for this handbag is accessible at all. However, I do think that there are some accessible prices for the row handbags if you were interested in trying out the row. And I say accessible, not that it's affordable. I just think it's a more friendlier price point and it's more comparable to a luxury designer bag. But yeah, I think that the Margot is one of their handbags that they are really standing for. And I think that comes with the price point. If the bag is worth the price, I think that decision ultimately comes down to the individual who is purchasing it. In my mind, I was able to justify it because I think that it fits with my own personal style and I don't have a handbag like it and a bunch of other reasons, but I was able to justify this for myself, but this is definitely a big splurge. And I've told myself that this would be my birthday gift for myself just because it's not something that I could just pick up on the whim. But yeah, I definitely think that the price is a con for this handbag. Would I buy this handbag again? Personally, I I would because I do really, really like the design of this handbag and I'm very, very happy with the choice that I made of the smooth leather and the gold hardware. For all the reasons that I've already mentioned in this video, as well as my previous video, I would buy this handbag again. I wish it wasn't as expensive as it was, but that's just the reality of it. I think that it fits my personal style and I'm able to use it pretty often. So it's not just something that's collecting dust in my wardrobe. I think right now it makes sense for me and the collection that I have and I'm glad that I bought it and I look forward to continuing to wear it and really finding that balance of not babying it but also still trying to make sure that I take care of my things. That is my one month update of the Ro Margot. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about the Ro Margot in the size 12 specifically and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please give it a thumbs up. It really supports the channel and I will talk to you in my next video. 
Bye, you guys.